the building. A pall of smoke covering the front of it. The SAS had moved in. After a second explosion, smoke obscured the front of the embassy again. And then there was gunfire. It seemed to come from all around the building. By this time, the police and the press nearby were told to take cover, and they scrambled between, between, behind cars and equipment. Shots rang out all over the street. Meanwhile, people were still taking cover in the streets outside and no one was moving towards the building. The SAS were inside. The first hostage to come out was BBC sound recorder Sim Harris. He scrambled from the balcony into the adjacent building. He'd gone to the embassy last Wednesday to get a visa for Tehran with BBC producer Chris Kramer. Chris Kramer later came out sick. He'll be talking to us later in this bulletin. The embassy by then was surrounded by activity and a seeming confusion. The emergency services moved closer. Myself, uh, John Michael is. I think everybody knows me as Mac. I spent 23 years in the British Army. Six and a half engineers and 16 and a half special air service regiment. Most people would have heard of some of my exploits, namely the Iranian embassy, uh, where I was sort of captured on film, as you might say, uh, going in through the front window without being asked. Um, I've served practically every country in the world while I was with the regiment, uh, seen quite a few things, some good, some not so good, uh, but at the end of the day, I like to think uh, I came away a better person, uh, having been involved in these things. Uh, I must say, uh, I did enjoy myself while I was in the regiment. I've uh, made a lot of good friends and met a lot of strange and wonderful people, and basically had a real good time. The door as near as you can silently. When you get to the door, yeah, you've got the first guy who is actually looking at the door, yeah, and what he's looking for is where the handle is and where the hinges are, yeah, because the whole thing, if you can see the hinges on the door, yeah, yeah, the door will normally swing towards you. If you can't see the hinges, the door will normally swing inwards, yeah, but you've got an old adage uh, in any building, doors always swing into the rooms, yeah. But the thing is, that one day you might not check it and you're trying to put the door inwards and you find it comes outwards. This could happen. Yeah, you end up looking pretty stupid and you also might end up dead. Right? So you're checking the door, so these sort of things. Yeah? You're also listening to see if anybody's inside. Yeah? You could also be looking, if it's dark, even in daylight, you get light coming through the bottom of the door. So that in itself may help you to know if it's occupied. Yeah? So that's basically the first guy's job. Now, this can be done, as I say, with a bit of firmness. You might get away with it just by speaking to them, or you may actually have to physically hold them in that room and say, right, stay there, stay in that corner, whatever, yeah? 
In some cases, if they're hyper that hyperactive, you may even have to handcuff them. Yep, prevent them from running out of the building. Remember, the assault on the building, or the rescue mission, if you want to call it that way, is still ongoing. You can't afford to have a hostage, or perhaps it could even be a sleeper from the body side, run about that building, yep, getting in everybody's way, and perhaps getting shot. Yeah, remember, one of these hostages might be, let's say, high up the old social ladder, and that's the person that you're going to rescue. Yep, that's your main priority. What would happen if he or she comes running out of the room because you haven't controlled them, and they get shot in the corridor after being rescued? It wouldn't look very good. Yeah, your CV would be uh, straight out the window. Yep. Um... When you see dead bodies, this sort of thing, does it worry you? Do you get upset about it? Do you get nightmares? The answer again is no. Um, it's something you become accustomed to. It may sound a bit, well, let's say savage, yeah, but you do become accustomed to seeing dead bodies, <clears throat> especially in the job that I used to do. Um, the thing about it, you learn not to become um, too personalised with the individuals. They are let's say, an enemy, yeah? You may know a lot of personal details about them, uh, but these are soon forgotten, yeah? It's just an enemy, yeah? Because at the end of the day, no matter what sort of job you're doing within the anti-terrorist, uh, let's say, scenarios, they are a bad guy, you're a good guy, yeah? They're trying to kill you or kill hostages, and you are in there to stop them. And if you've got to kill them to stop them, 